Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Wednesday morning. Job chapter 16, verse 15. There's three amazing verses. I've sewed sackcloth over my skin and buried my brow in the dust. My face is red with weeping. Dark shadows ring my eyes. Yet my hands have been free of violence and my prayer is pure. Now it's that latter phrase, my prayer is pure, that is fascinating for me. Could any one of us claim, would you claim that when you prayed today or if we prayed just now, do we, how can we say our prayer is pure? We're not pure. Are we saying we're pure? The word pure, it's just, it's just such a great word. It's a very uh, Dundonian word, like in Glasgow as well, you get pure dead brilliant. But I remember the kids sometimes that would, that, you know, we'd do a discovery camp and kids would talk about, ah, oh, that's a pure chair. Oh, that's pure minging, which is kind of opposite. Minging was, you know, disgusting. It was purely disgusting. Um, pure was used a lot. And pure is used in the Bible as well. And I think we know what it, what it means. So how could Job say he was pure, you know, without spot, clean, morally, spiritually clean? Now notice his extreme situation first. He sews sackcloth on his skin because his skin is so broken. His face is red with weeping, and on my eyelids, he says, is deep darkness. The shadows around his eyes are the shadows of death. Um, you look like death warmed up is a phrase that we would use sometimes. The face is the mirror of the soul, and incidentally, you know, that's one of the problems I have during COVID with masks. Everyone says, oh, well, wear a mask. What harm does it do? I think it does a great deal of harm, actually, socially and how we communicate. I, I say that when I'm preaching to people, you've got masks on. I, I can't see uh, your face. And I think our faces communicate a great deal about us. Now, that's not to say we shouldn't wear masks. I'm not going to get into a diatribe about that. But what I'm saying is there is a cost involved and we can't see the person. And Job is saying, look, the shadow of death is on his face. And yet he has a clear conscience. He says, my hands have been free of violence and my prayer is pure. Now, how can that be? Is this sinless perfection? You know, the old Keswick movement, not Keswick today, but in the late 19th, early 20th century, and there was a tendency <coughs> towards sinless perfectionism. For a while here in Australia, there was a movement which caused a great deal of harm in evangelical circles by teaching that. But we can't, we can't. None of us is pure. Even this day, I know that I have sinned and will sin. Psalm 24 says it puts it this way, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. So does that mean none of us can go to God? Jesus says in the Beatitudes, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. How can we be pure? I think it just simply means this. It means this for Job. It certainly means it for Christ. It means that we are forgiven and it means our sins are taken away. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, 1 John. I love in, in Psalm 19 verse 12, it says, forgive my hidden faults. Who can discern our hidden faults? But he's confessing the sin that he knows, but he's also praying about the sin he doesn't know. And maybe that's what we can do as well. So here is where the rub is. A pure heart is a forgiven heart. It's a heart that's been purified by Christ. You know that old hymn, are you washed in the blood of the lamb? Well, blood doesn't cleanse you, does it? Not physically, but the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. My prayer is pure, says Job, because I, I prayed for forgiveness. And I don't think he knew about Christ. We're going to come on to, tomorrow to look at some of that. But, you know, let me just leave it there. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave you with Psalm 24 that we mentioned from St. Peter's Free Church. The psalm, I think, more than anything, we took as our motto. Ye gates, lift up your heads on high. Let the King of glory come in. You want a pure heart. Let the King of glory come in. 
See you tomorrow. Yeah.